Hi everyone, this is William from the Headphone Experience. I'm here tonight with my full review of the Fio K9 Pro, and yes, this is the ESS version. Uh, this was loaned to me for review by Apos Audio, and it's available from them for uh, the current price is $849.99 in US dollars. And I will put a link uh, below the video if you want to check it out at Apos. But anyway, um, I'm just going to get right to the point with this video. This thing is really good. I, I said it was good in my first impressions, but I didn't realize how good it was until I actually started comparing this to other equipment and found out that this thing holds its own against equipment that is uh, much more expensive, separate amps, separate decks, you know, and uh, for an all-in-one combo, this thing uh, has really blown me away. And I'll tell you right now, this thing's a contender for uh, my year-end video for um, combination amp deck of the year, or at least amp deck of the year under $1,000. So anyway, um, this thing, it, well, I'll just... Um, get into my description of it. This is a combination amp DAC headphone amp with a uh, preamp uh, preamp function in it. It uh, does have either um, fixed outputs or preamp volume controlled outputs. Uh, this uses uh, the newer version, this is the newer version, this originally uh, came with AKM DAC chips and because of the shortage of AKM they uh, switched over to ESS and this is using two of the Sabre 9038 Pro DAC chips, that's the top of the line uh, ESS DAC chips and those are eight channels each and not everyone uses all channels but Fio with this design is using all eight channels paralleled and one DAC chip, chip for each so basically eight channels of DAC chip paralleled together for each channel on this amp. Uh, this thing weighs a substantial eight pound or six pounds I'm sorry but it's uh, very solid, seems to be very well built and um, you know pretty substantial weight for its size. It's about eight inches wide, about eight and a half inches deep front to back and about three inches tall. Um, as far as the amplifier section of this, it uses THX AAA 788 amp chips and uh, to tell you the truth I was a little bit concerned about uh, reviewing this because first of all I've never reviewed an amp with THX uh, amp chips in it and I've heard uh, quite a few times that they were a uh, little dry, little anical, analytical sounding, kind of boring and um, and then combined with the um, e ESS Sabre um, 9038 DAC chips I've heard a few DACs that use those that they also sounded a little dry and um, you know not real not a real rich sound so anyway I was kind of concerned that would be the problem or could be a problem with this amp DAC that it just might I expected it to be very detailed but I was worried that it might be a little on the cold side or a little on the dry side and it turns out that's not the case it definitely is analytical it brings out every little detail in the recording but it has never sounded cold, dry, or boring to me. It actually has a pretty, um, pretty warm, rich sound to it. And I've been extremely happy with the way this sounds. And like I said, spent a lot of time listening to this so far. Um, did want to point out it has four digital inputs, which would be coax, optical, USB, and Bluetooth. And there's actually two different USB uh, ports on this, a Type B on the back and a Type C on the side. But the input switch only has five settings and four of those are digital, so or choices. So you can't hook up both digital inputs at the same time and switch back and forth between them. It does prior prioritize one, I believe. I'm not sure which it is. So 
you'll have to unplug one to be able to use the other. And then um, it has one analog input, but sort of the same thing. You have two different choices. You have either RCA single-ended inputs or you have a 4.4 millimeter balanced input on the back. But once again, you only have one choice of a analog input on your input selector. And I think it uh, puts the 4.4 millimeter as priority. So if you have them both hooked up, you're not going to be able to get to the RCA without unhooking the 4.4. Um, this unit has three headphone outputs, 6.3 millimeter single ended, um, 4.4 millimeter balanced, and full size 4 pin XLR balanced headphone output. It has RCA um, and XLR outputs on the rear, which are either can either be set fixed to use it as a um, standalone DAC, or they can be volume controlled to use this as, as a preamp. There's uh, three gain settings uh, on the front, easy to get to, switch, um, and the output power of this unit is rated at 2.1 watts per channel and that's into 32 ohms. Uh, there is a phone app and I did not try it. I'm not real. I, I'll be honest with you, I have an iPhone 11 and I don't know how to use it and um, I just use it for making calls and texts and stuff like that. I'm not big into apps. In fact, I probably couldn't even figure out how to load it to my phone. And um, so I didn't try that feature, but I believe or there's uh, supposed to be seven di a choice of seven different digital filters that you can run through with the phone app and um, also an EQ feature, but I believe that only works with Bluetooth and I think there's a balance control and, um, and some different choices as far as your Bluetooth uh, codex, but um, Anyway, I did not use that, but something I did um, want to point out in my first video, I my first impressions, I said I had not tried this unit with a uh, USB input yet because from what I read, I was going to have to install a driver on my computer before it would link up with this unit. And I finally did get around to doing that and I tried it. And I didn't need to do that. I didn't need to install anything. Um, I plugged this into my HP desktop computer, which is running Windows 10. And I immediately um, got a notice or received a notice that it was linking the uh, Fio K9 to my computer. And about 30 seconds later, I received a second notice that it was set up and ready to go. And I turned on my source and I'm using uh, Windows Media Player, which um, I have about maybe 50 CDs um, ripped to Media Player and they're in uh, web um, lossless format. And I use that when I'm using um, my computer as a source. So anyway, um, that's what I did. I and all I did is turn on the media player, and it was ready to go and played and performed beautifully, no problems at all, and no driver needed to be installed. So um, I did want to roll in here a little closer and show you a close up of the unit. And I'll start at this end. You've got your um, headphone outputs. You've got your four pin XLR. And then you've got your 6.3 millimeter single ended and your 4.4 millimeter balance. And then this unit has a large volume knob. And um, if you have the older unit with the AKA DAX in it, um, it will have a silver ring around the volume knob. But if you, the, that's how you can tell the difference. The ESS version has a gold ring around the volume knob. And I did want to point out that this volume knob is not linear. It's not like, you know, it just, um, it's not the same all the way around where, you know, a linear knob, you, as you turn it, it would, um, the volume would wrap up, ramp up at a, a consistent level, but that's not the way this works. It starts out real slow. So even with a real sensitive IEM or headphone, you're probably going to be at like nine o'clock before you even start hearing it. And 
But the further you go, the faster the sound wraps or ramps up. And when you get around, you know, to like one, two, three o'clock on the volume knob, it increases, you know, really fast and adds a lot of power. And if you're running a hard to drive headphone, that's where you're going to be. Something like the uh, Hi-Fi Man um, HE 560, which uh, needs a lot of power, a lot of current to drive and make it sound correctly. You're going to be up here, you know, like in the two or, th or three o'clock range, even in high gain. But it doesn't distort at that point, and it puts starts putting out some serious power. Like I said, it's rated at 2.1 watts, and that seemed to be plenty of power for any headphone I threw at it, um, including the HE 560 and the HE 400 SE, which also needs a lot of power. Did a very good job with both of those, and um, you know didn't. I, it seemed to bring out the full potential on both of those headphones. Um, I'm not going to say that this will drive everything. I don't have an HE6 or an Abyss or a Susvara, something like that. The headphones that are known to really need a lot of power. So I wasn't able to test it with any of those. So, you know, I can't tell you if it's going to be adequate. But anything up to the HE560, which needs like twice the power of a Sundara or um, the version 1 or 2 of the Aria. Um, it did fine with those and um, you can see in my picture behind me I've got the um, that's actually the Aria Stealth that I have with the amp there and it did a very good job with that and this amp and DAC in my opinion is on a pretty close level with that headphone just um, a very good match but um, I'll talk in a minute about what equipment I used when reviewing this. So anyway, I wanted to finish showing you the, uh, the unit here. You've got your controls here. You've got four switches and you've got five LEDs up across the top and these let you know what input you're on. And I also wanted to mention that there is an LED light around the volume knob that turns a different color depending on what um, your digital input with the resolution of it is but anyway your first switch here down is um, your headphone output and then the middle is oh what's the middle oh that's your preamp function if you want um, you put it to there if you're using your outputs on the back and want them volume controlled or you push it all the way to the top and that's your DAC function which sets your um, your outputs on the back at a fixed level to use this as a standalone deck. And I did want to mention, I mentioned this in my first video, that the writing is very small and very hard to read and this does come with some stickers. A uh, couple different choices you can put over this that are easier to read but I didn't do that because this is a loner unit and um, you know the next person that reviews this unit might not like that so or you know this belongs to Apos Audio so you know I don't mess with things that don't belong to me but anyway uh, the next switch is your three-way game control and I wanted to mention that um, not only that okay the game control when you switch that it um, takes about five seconds for the volume to ram ramp up. So say you're on low gain and you switch it up to the next level, it doesn't immediately jump up to the higher gain. It starts out where it was and over about five seconds the volume gradually ramps up. Same thing you go to high gain, it takes about five seconds for the volume to ramp up. So if you have it set too high, you've got a few seconds to make volume adjustments or whatever you need to do. Um, the third button here is your input button and you just put each time you push it it toggles through one of the LED uh, settings here and it's the same thing with that every time you change your input it starts out at like zero volume and over about five seconds just gradually increases the volume and that's a feature I haven't seen before and I really like it um, it just it keeps you from you know like if you switch inputs and the level um, of one of those inputs is higher or something you don't get shocked by a big loud blast once again you've got like five seconds to get on your volume knob and make you know the proper adjustments that you need to do 
Um, the last button here on the end is your power on off, but there's also um, your main power switch is on the back. So what I did is left the rear switch on and then use this which puts it into standby mode and it stays slightly warm and it stays ready to use and I did want to mention that um, this amp most of the time I used it standing up on its side like this like in the picture behind me and either way though laying flat or up it does get warm but it never gets hot so it you know I'm I don't, not saying you want to pack other things around it, but it doesn't need a whole lot of space and it doesn't put off a whole lot of heat. I mean, even using this for a couple hours straight, it never really got what I would consider hot at all. Just, just warm is uh, about it. So anyway, um, before I get into the sound of this, I wanted to mention the equipment I used in my uh, comparisons with this, and it's a pretty long list. I compared this to basically everything I had, even equipment much more expensive to uh, see how it held up because, you know, I was just really surprised as to how well this did against more expensive equipment. So anyway, uh, most of my review was done with CDs uh, using a Cambridge Audio CD transport. And then um, some of the equipment I used in my comparison starting out with the Topping D70S MQA version DAC. And that has been my favorite DAC that I've reviewed under $1,000 uh, for a year, year and a half now. It's, I, in fact, I like the D70S better than the D90ES which uh, the D70 sold for about $650 and like the original Theo K9 used AKM DAC chips and isn't available anymore but I actually compared that directly to the topping D90ES which is a $900 standalone DAC with no headphone amp in it and I actually preferred the D70 it had a the D90 was extremely detailed, but had a very analytical, kind of dry, kind of cold sound to me, where the D70 had a warmer, more R2R sounding uh, sound to it, and I actually preferred that. Um, so um, I also dragged out my um, older, it's what, about 12 years old now, my Benchmark DAC 1, and I know it's a little bit obsolete, but it was one of the best stacks you could buy back in 2012 when I bought it. Excuse me just a second. Anyway, the uh, Benchmark DAC 1 was very, very highly rated. It was uh, given an A rating by Stereophile Magazine several years in a row. And there are newer versions. Uh, the DAC 2 came out a few years later and the current version is the Benchmark DAC 3 which is considered one of the best measuring DACs you can buy and so anyway I threw the uh, Benchmark DAC 1 into the mix to see how it compared sound wise um, the Burson Conductor 3 Reference which is a combination DAC amp that sells for about twice the price of this I wanted to see how this did against that. A uh, headphone amp only, the LSA Hyperdrive 2, which is a hybrid tube solid state amp. Uh, my Audio GD Master 9, which is a um, very large, very heavy standalone DAC that costs, or amp that costs about twice the price of this, and it's an amp only. And then also that in stacked with the um, Audio GD R8 MK2 R2 R DAC. And that combination, uh, the Audio GD stack, costs over four times the price of this. In you know, the both together, the DAC and amp. Um, I also compared this, and I know this is the one people want to know about, the Hi Fi Man. EF400, which is a combination amp DAC that I reviewed just a short time ago that's very popular. And, um, you know, I went on and on about how I love the sound of that. 
And also, I threw in, um, in my comparison, the Waveborn Edelweiss 3 Power Amp Plus, which is an all-tube uh, transformer coupled amp that I absolutely love. And I wanted to see how this did against an all-tube amp. And then headphones uh, that I used in my review would be, um, I used several Hi-Fi Man headphones. The HE400 SE, the uh, Edition XS, the newer um, uh, Sandara Closeback, the Ananda non-stealth version, the Ananda stealth version, the Aria stealth, and then I also use the ZMF Atrium, which is a 600, no, 300, yeah, I can't remember, I think that's a 300 ohm headphone. And um, and then the Kennerton Thrower, which is pretty much um, my the best of all my um, open back headphones, and I tried that uh, to see just how far this could go, you know, because I mean, you, when comparing amps, you'll um, with say I use the you know something like the Hi-Fi Man Edition XS, I'm gonna be able to compare amps up to a certain point. But going beyond that, they're going to pretty much all sound the same where I have to pull out a higher end headphone to start hearing the differences. You know, when you get up more into the high end of equipment, you need a high end headphone to hear the differences. So um, that's where the GMF Atrium and the Kennerton Thrower came into this review. So anyway, I'm going to take a break here and then I'll come back with the second part of this video and that will be my actual comparisons and how I thought that this unit compared to all the um, equipment that I mentioned just a minute ago. So um, I'll be right back. I'm back from a short break and want to talk about the comparisons I did to the uh, FIO K9 Pro ESS version and uh, I when I did my first impressions uh, I guess that was about six weeks ago I mentioned that I had just reviewed the iFi uh, Zen stack the uh, actually the signature Zen stack and I had about a one day overlap where I had that and the Theo at the same time so I did a very quick comparison and I only had, like I said, one day, and I got about one hour to do the comparison that night. And I mentioned this in my first video that I thought that the um, Zen Stack had a slightly warmer sound than the Fio, but um, the Fio sounded to me to be just a little bit cleaner and more of a sh sharper focus sound than the Zen Stack. So. Um, but like I said, I had to send the Zen stack back the, the next day and didn't have any more time to do the comparison. Uh, the next thing I compared this to was the Topping D70S MQA version DAC. And like I mentioned earlier, that is one of my absolute favorite DACs. And um, I really like it. It's got a nice warm sound. Sounds almost uh, R2R. And the way I did uh, compared the two is I ran the topping D70 into the FIO and um, I was only able to use the RCA, RCA um, single-ended inputs because the topping, even though it has balanced outputs, they're XLR and the balanced input of the FIO is only 4.4 uh, millimeter Pentacon and I don't own a cable that would do that and I don't even know if there's a cable made that does that. I have the opposite. I have a 4.4 millimeter at the output end that goes into two 3 pin XLRs at the input but I can't reverse that because the XLR connections on it are made to be for inputs, not outputs. They're male versus female, so that doesn't work. So, so basically, I was running the D70 into the FIO single-ended. So anyway, I compared the two, and I, I spent like two hours comparing these two DACs through the same amp, the amp of the FIO, and 
it took me a long, long time to hear the difference. Um, the tone balance was very similar. The, to the sound stage was very similar. Everything sounded almost identical, but finally, after about two hours of listening, I finally decided that the DAC, internal DAC of the FIO sounded slightly sharper and just slightly more detailed than the topping, which really surprised me because I loved that topping. And like I said earlier, I liked better than the D80, uh, the D, D80 ES, I think it was from topping their flagship. So I was kind of surprised. So what I did next to make it more fair to find out if um, the FIO DAC was actually better than the D70, I hooked both of those up, the K9 uh, FIO using the balanced outputs and the D70 from topping using the balanced outputs and plugged them both into my Master 9 amp. And the Master 9 is the best amp I've found for comparing DACs because it has two sets of balanced inputs and it also has a memory on each input's volume so I can switch back and forth between the two, match the volume up and don't have to readjust it every time I go back and forth if the DACs have a different output level. So anyway, um, I hooked both DACs. The DA internal DAC of the K9 and the D70 DAC to the Master 9 and switch back and forth and I spent probably an hour switching back and forth, tried several different CDs and I will be honest, after an hour I don't think I would be able to tell the difference in a blind test. If I didn't know which is which, I don't think I could tell the difference. So basically that tells me that the DAC in the K9 um, is just as good or, you know, to me, just as good as the D the DAC, um, the D70 from Topping, which is a $650 standalone DAC, not including a headphone amp. So I was really impressed by that because, like I said, the D70 has been my favorite DAC under $1,000 for a long time now. So anyway, uh, the next the next comparison I did, I compared the FIO assay deck amp combo compared, um, oh, and, and I then I ran the um, balanced output from the FIO into the Master 9 and compared, that basically gave me a comparison of the amp part of the FIO compared to the Master 9 amp because the Master 9 was running off of the FIO DAC. So anyway, um, I hooked it up, compared it, switched back and forth, and probably spent another hour going back and forth. And I can tell you that, once again, the sound was very similar, very similar tone balance, uh, very similar sound stage, very hard to tell the two apart. Um, where I could finally tell the two apart of it is I was using uh, the Hi-Fi Man Ananda Stealth and I was also using the um, Hi-Fi Man Aria Stealth and both of those are fairly easy to drive. It wasn't until I tried a hard to drive headphone like the HE560 that I noticed a bit of a difference and that was that the M9 just seemed to take a little bit better control of the headphone and control the bass a little bit better and I think that's because of the you know larger amount of power available where the K9 is rated about 2 watts per channel and the Master 9 is about 9 watts per channel so with an easy to drive headphone I had a hard time telling the two apart um, with a harder to drive headphone, I heard a little bit better bass control out of the Master 9. And that was basically the only difference I could hear. Okay, so next um, I went to the, use the K9 as a combo DAC amp. And I compared it to the Benchmark DAC 1, also using it, that is an amp DAC, using its own, that is a combination amp and DAC so I used the headphone output of each of those and compared the two. Okay so um, 
once again, it took me a long time to hear the difference. They both had a very similar tone balance and um, very pleasant sound, uh, very clean. But um, after about an hour, I finally came up with, I think that the Fio had a slightly wider sound stage. And also, I think that the Fio actually had a slightly cleaner, slightly better focus sound than the Benchmark. And that's pretty amazing because that, you know, it. I think most people would still consider that a pretty good DAC. But I would have to say, I think the DAC um, in the Fio outperformed the Benchmark a little bit. I mean, it is like, you know, 12 years newer. So I guess that has something to do with it. Um, so to make sure it wasn't the amp part of the DAC one, I then took the K9 from Fio and ran the balanced outputs as a DAC, standalone DAC, into the Master 9 and used the balanced outputs of the Benchmark DAC one and ran that into the Master 9. And then once again, compared the two DAC to DAC using the same amp, the uh, Audio GD Master 9. And I came up with pretty much the same results. Um, a slightly wider soundstage out of the K9 and a slightly cleaner, uh, better focus sound out of the K9. So I have to admit, I prefer the DAC in the Fio K9 slightly, I mean, not a big difference, but I slightly prefer it to the DAC in the Benchmark DAC 1. Um, so the next comparison I did, I used the uh, Fio as a combination amp DAC and compared it to the Burson conductor, uh, conductor 3 reference. And um, that goes for about $1,750, so it's like twice the price and very respected as what most people would consider a high-end amp DAC combination. And I think last year I uh, chose that as the best amp DAC, um, you know, of any price that I've compared. So anyway, I compared, um, and this was headphone output to headphone output. So it was the feel using its own amp and DAC and the Conductor 3 reference using its own amp and DAC. And the results I got is I thought the Conductor 3 reference had a uh, slightly more weight to the sound and was a little bit more dynamic. But I thought that the Fio um, had a slightly cleaner sound with slightly more detail and a little bit wider sound stage. So to find out if it was the amp or DAC that was making the difference, I hooked up the, I used the uh, Fio as a standalone DAC and ran the DAC output into the Burson and went back and forth um, listening to the Burson amp switching back and forth from its internal DAC to the uh, Fio DAC and I came up with that the Fio DAC I thought was a little bit cleaner a little bit more detailed and had a little bit wider sound stage and a little bit more three-dimensional sound stage so I um, in my opinion, I think the DAC in the um, VO is actually a little bit better. Not a huge difference, but a noticeable amount better than the DAC in the Burson Conductor 3 reference. Okay, so then I want to know um, how the amp part of each compared to each other. So I, um, how'd I do that? Okay, I got confused there for a second. I did so many comparisons that I forgot how I wired this up. I was switching wires for hours for the last couple days. So anyway, what I did is I ran the DAC of the um, output of the Fio into the Conductor 3 reference and compared the headphone output of the Fio to the headphone output of the Burson using not the internal DAC but the Fio as its DAC. So when I did that, um, basically what I came up with is the Burson DAC 
has a little bit more weight, a little bit more body, sounds a little bit more dynamic and a little bit warmer. So even though I preferred the DAC of the Fio, I still, I think that the amp part of the uh, Burson is the better amp of the two. It just, um, you can tell it, it's got a lot more power and you could you kind of feel that in the music. You just felt more weight and more body to the music out of the Burson. So um, I think the Burson actually has, um, in my opinion, the better amp of the two. So uh, then I took the K9 um, and using its own DAC, compared that to the LSA Hyperdrive 2 which is a headphone amp only. Um, it's a hybrid tube solid state amp. And I compared the Fio Acid Amp DAC to the LSA using the um, DAC of the Fio into one of its inputs and compared the two. And um, once again, a similar sound. Nice um, on the warm side, but very detailed. But I did notice in one song, and um, it was off of this CD. This is Natalie Merchant. And if you're not familiar with who she is, she was the lead singer of 10,000 Maniacs for a long time until she went solo. And this CD is called Tiger Lily. There's a sound on the back, uh, track four. It's called The River, or just River. And in the beginning, it has this really low, uh, rumbly sub bass. And I did notice, and it's one of my favorite CDs for um, comparing equipment, it is very well recorded. So anyway, um, when I went back and forth, I'd, the sound of the two amps, the K9 amp versus the uh, LSA amp, were very similar, but in that track, that really low sub bass in the beginning, I just thought that the uh, Fio had a little bit more weight to the sub bass, a little bit more rumble to it. Um, I don't know if it necessarily went lower, but it just seemed to, uh, when I was listening to the headphones, that that sub bass just had a little bit more rumble to it. But anyway, other than that, the two amps sounded very similar. Okay, so uh, I wanted to see how the K9 as a DAC amp compared to a full tube amp, and that's from Waveborn, and um, probably the best sounding amp I've ever heard up to this point. And so what I did, that is an amp only without a DAC. I once again used the DAC out of the Fio into the Waveborn, and that's the uh, Power Amp Plus from Waveborn. And so compared the uh, Fio as a DAC amp to using its own headphone amp to the amp of the uh, Waveborn and uh, the Waveborn came across as a little bit warmer to me but had just as much or possibly more detail than the Fio. Um, not drastically warmer, but a little bit warmer. But once again, this is a full tube amp. Um, and then also the Power Amp Plus from Waveborn, I thought had a little more depth to the sound stage and a little bit more of a three dimensional, more layered sound. And I didn't notice that so much with the Hi Fi Man headphones. I tried both the Ananda Stealth and the Aria Stealth and really didn't, I was kind of picking up on the better depth, but not so much until I tried the Kennerton Thror. And the Kennerton Thror, um, of any headphone I've ever heard, I think has the most depth of the sound stage and that's where it became more noticeable. There was definitely more depth and more of a three-dimensional sound coming from the Waveborn tube amp than from the Fio, but that is probably my favorite amp to listen to if I'm just doing, cat. you know, if I just sit down and just want to listen to headphones and I'm not doing a review, I probably use that amp more than any other. I love the way that amp sounds. I love the three-dimensional soundstage and the Fio held its own very well. It, I don't think it was quite as good 
as the Waveborn, but it held its own very well and was a lot closer to the Waveborn than I thought it would. So um, I'm going to take another break for a second and get back with my conclusion to this video. I'm back from another break and I'm going to try to wrap up this video here pretty quick. I know it's getting really long, but I did a huge number of comparisons with this and uh, just wanted to let you know how it compared with all this different equipment. So anyway, um, I did realize that I forgot to show you the back of this unit. So I'm going to do that real quick. Um, you've got your AC input here. You've got your main power switch. You've got your four digital inputs, your coax, your optical, your Bluetooth antenna, and your USB. And then you've got your 4.4 millimeter balanced input. And um, yeah, just wanted to make sure. And then your RCA single ended inputs, and then your RCA single ended outputs, and your XLR balanced outputs which can be used either fixed as a DAC or um, what happened my uh, monitor went up behind me let me get that in a second um, or you can use your XL or you can use it um, volume controlled as a preamp and I'm not sure what happened back here there we go um, I saw blackness in my uh, in my uh, little screen on my camera so anyway that's never happened to me before I guess it's, that means this video is getting too long anyway um, one of the comparisons that I know a lot of people were waiting to hear about is the Hi-Fi Man EF400 which is also a combination amp deck that I really really like and it's a little bit lower priced at $5.99. I believe it's on sale right now for $4.99. But my one issue with the Hi-Fi Man, it only has one digital input and no analog input. So all it has is a USB input. And um, really wish that amp had more inputs, but I love the sound of it. So anyway, I did get a chance to compare the two. I had to use them both on my desk and use digital uh, USB inputs from my computer as my source to both of them. And it didn't take very long to hear the difference between the two. And like I said, I love the Hi-Fi Mat. Um, but the EF400 comes across as a little bit more dynamic and a little bit more punchy, the sound. To me, um, it's like five watts per channel, and you can tell it has that power. It's got a lot of power behind it, so um, it just hits a little bit harder, and um, it just the music has a little bit more weight to it. Where the Fio, um, I think it comes across as a little bit cleaner. It's just a little bit cleaner, better focus, crisper sound. Than the hi-fi man not drastic differences um, not huge um, I would actually consider the sound of them pretty close as far as you know which I prefer like I said hi-fi man a little bit more dynamic uh, feel a little bit cleaner sound but um, the big difference there's two big differences the feel has four digital inputs and one analog input where the Hi-Fi Man has one digital input and no analog inputs but the Hi-Fi Man is normally $250 cheaper and right now $350 cheaper so if you only need a, did, or a USB input then the Hi-Fi Man is definitely the better deal if you're not going to use these other inputs. But if you do need the inputs, um, you know, overall, I'd have to say go with the Fio. But like I said, it's uh, $850 compared to $500 for the Hi-Fi Man right now. So that is a pretty substantial difference. So, um what it comes to, oh, I had one more comparison I wanted to mention before I wrap up this video. Uh, this is sort of the ultimate test, in my opinion, my reference system that I basically measure everything against, and it's been this way for a while now, 
is the um, Audio GD Master 9 amp stacked with the Audio GD R8 MK2 R2R deck. And the two stacked together, first of all, you're looking at a $4,000 stack compared to $850. You're looking at 17 inches square, these units, compared to 8 inches square. You're looking at 8 inches tall compared to, <clears throat> what, 3 inches tall. And you're looking at 56 pounds combined, the Audio GD stack, compared to 6 pounds. So the Audio GD stack is not a desktop system. It is a put it on your audio rack system. It's just too big to put on any desk where this can be used on your desk. But anyway, I wanted to see how this compared to that system. And I listened to them for quite a while and noticed that they have a very similar tone balance. And this is um, using, you know, the FIO as a DAC, built-in DAC and amp, listening to this amp compared to listening to the Audio GD stack, the DAC and amp combination. Um, they had very similar clarity and detail. And the only real difference that I noticed, and I didn't, once again, didn't notice it as much with the Hi-Fi Man headphones, because I, the best Hi-Fi Man headphone I've heard so far is the Aria Stealth. And I also reviewed the version 1 of the Aria. And none of the Hi-Fi Man headphones I've reviewed so far has had a whole lot of depth of the soundstage. The original Aria had a huge wide soundstage, but still not a lot of depth. So anyway, um, when I really notice the difference is when I use the Kennerton Thror, like I said earlier, it has really good depth of the soundstage. And I did notice that the Audio GD stack does have um, a noticeably deeper soundstage with more of a three-dimensional sound and more layering to the sound, more distinct layering where different instruments that are, are at different distances, both as far as out in front of me and off to the side, just more, um, you know, I can place the instruments each, you know, some instruments further away, some closer where with the um, VO, they, the instruments sound more of being all the same distance from me. So that was the only real difference I heard. So, I mean, it's incredible to me that, you know, that this $850 DAC amp combo holds its own that well against a $4,000 stack from Audio GD and takes up like one eighth the space and <laughs> what, one tenth the weight. So, um, so anyway, bottom line. Um, this little, and $850 is not cheap, but at $850, it held its own against every comparison I made to equipment that cost double, triple, even four times the amount. So in my opinion, what you are getting out of this VO K9 Pro ESS version is you're getting high-end sound at a mid-fi price. And some might argue that $850 is mid-fi, but the way I look at it is this is an amp and DAC. So you're looking at maybe a 400, and, say you divide it into $425 for the amp, $425 for the DAC. I don't, those aren't high-end prices. Those are still, you know, what I would consider mid-fi prices. So you're getting high-end sound, you know, equal to systems that cost far more. Um, you know, how, I don't, I haven't heard anything that I think at this price can compete with it. Um, yes, the Hi-Fi Man EF400 is great, but um, like I said, this is a little bit cleaner and it has the inputs. I realize it is a little bit more. Is there anything I don't like about this? Um, the writing on the front is very small and very hard to read. I'll give you one more look at this here. 
and if you get the light just right you can read it if you don't um, it's really hard and until I have these buttons memorized um, you know what I just showed you this upside down I didn't realize that until you have these buttons memorized I had to use a flashlight every time I wanted to use the controls. I had to get a flashlight and get the light just at the right angle to be able to read and switch the controls. It's that hard. Like I said, it does come with stickers that um, you can put on there that are easier to read. I didn't do that. It also um, does come with the stand to, it's just plastic, but to uh, mount the unit vertically, or it is wide enough. It'll stand here by itself, you know, without the stand. But the stand's nice because it tips it up a little bit. Um, so, yeah, I can't... I had a hard time reading the um, the label or the writing on the front of the amp. It's, it's just something about the color of the amp and the color of the writing and just not enough contrast or something. And then, um, what else? Um, oh, the phone app thing. And for some people, that's not going to be a problem, but I don't like the fact that I've got to put an app on my phone and use my phone. I mean, until like about a year and a half ago, I never even had a smartphone, so that wouldn't have even been an option. But I don't like the fact that I have to use a phone to access some of the controls on this. Um, you know, the different uh, roll-off filters for the DAC or whatever. So... Um, that's one thing. I wish that those could be accessed through a menu or some way with the unit without having to use a phone. But other than that, I yeah, I can highly recommend this um, as a DAC amp. And as far as a headphone matching up with it, I think this needs at least a Hi-Fi Man, a Nanda, or a Nanda Stealth to appreciate how good this is. Any headphone lower than that, you're not going to hear what this DAC amp is capable of. And in my opinion, that is an excellent match. Um, the Hi-Fi Man Ananda Stealth sells for what, $6.99, so $7. You're looking at $15.50, and I know that's a lot of money, but $15.50 and you are getting what I consider a very high-end sound that even the best equipment is only going to be a small amount better. So for $15.50, you've got a great deck, a great amp, and a great headphone. Um, you can get even better with the Aria Stealth, although it doesn't have quite the sound stage width. And this amp deck is good enough, in my opinion, to match up very well with the Aria Stealth. So... Um, so where do I go from here? Um, in my opinion, this is probably first in line right now for my best amp deck of the year, which is only, what, a little over a month away, my year-end video. And unless something else comes along, it's probably going to win that award. Um, I just wanted to mention again, this was loaned to me by Apost Audio, and I've been working with them for a while. Um, they've been they've treated me great sent me all kinds of equipment for reviews so I'm gonna throw a link down in the uh, notes below this video to a post uh, that they currently sell this for $849.99 so anyway um, that's it I'm gonna wrap up this way too long video uh, once again this is William from the headphone experience if this video helped you please give me a thumbs up and the headphone experience at Facebook, I believe it's up to 19.7 thousand members. I'd like to see you over there. Once again, thanks for watching my video.